Same ingredients, same size. One burger costs 15 cents, the other $5. What's the difference? You may think they were made in different restaurants. The reality is one was made today and the other in 1950. Prices increase all the time. Slowly but surely, they get higher and higher. You're probably aware of this, but how often do you actually think about it? Not often, I'd imagine. You're busy with the everyday life. You shouldn't care about the price of a burger. Governments say an annual 2 to 3% inflation is a good thing. Why question it? Who are you to judge the system you were born into? Now say the price of a burger quadrupled in a month. Would you start questioning the system then? I'm sure you would. Your everyday life would be affected. Apply this to everything with a price tag. That would be a challenging world to live in. What would cause this to happen? Well, let's find out together. Monetary debasement causes the gradual price increase of goods. Those that control the supply of currency, usually a government, use monetary debasement to their advantage. When a currency is debased, a government creates more money for its spending. While this is great for governments, it leads to inflation for citizens. As a side note, we will be using the terms inflation and deflation often. Inflation is when money is worth less over time. Deflation is when money is worth more over time. With that covered, let's get back to monetary debasement. Throughout history, every government eventually creates more of its currency. That could be to help fund wars, pay off debt, or protect against viruses. As governments print more money, trust between citizens and their currency starts to erode. People look for other ways to store their wealth, specifically within assets that would hold or appreciate in value over time. Common examples today would be real estate, stocks, cryptocurrencies or gold. Monetary debasement played out in Germany during the 1920s. After World War I, Germany accrued a debt of 132 billion gold marks. Unsurprising to us, the German government decided to create more money to help pay off this debt. In return, asset values rose. The asset holders all thought they were rich. Eventually, citizens lost trust in their currency and hyperinflation took place. Think of this as inflation on steroids. On average, Germany saw prices quadruple each month between the 16 months of hyperinflation. Keeping your wealth in gold would have been a safe haven. By the end of this hyperinflation period, one gold mark would equal one trillion German marks. We can always find patterns in history. Across the globe, central banks are printing currencies at unseen levels. Will this help our current economic situation? Or are we making the problem worse for a later date? Let's explore both of these questions and come up with our own conclusions. Modern economists will argue that stimulus promotes spending and economic growth. Governments tell you that the printed money will go towards bettering social issues. This system should be sustainable as long as the economy keeps growing. Now ask yourself, what happens if the economy stops growing? How can governments solve this problem? The answer is quite simple. Governments will continue to print more money. Tons of it. Then inject that money back into the economy. To show you how this is playing out, look at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. The spike is the amount of US dollars printed in 2020. You can also see a similar outcome from other central banks across the globe. With printing money as the solution to an economic shutdown, let's consider the possible effects. One thing printing money would affect is cash. As the government prints, cash gets devalued. Where could we park this cash so it doesn't lose value? I'm sure you guessed it, assets. The value of assets would soar. This is great. Everyone can become rich as long as they have assets. What's happening here has a name. It's called the Cantillon effect. Basically, it draws the correlation between money printing and asset prices. As the government prints more money, asset prices will rise with it. Why might this rise in asset prices be a problem? It's certainly not a problem for the asset holders. What about the people that don't have wealth in assets? Will this rise in asset prices mean further wealth inequality worldwide? How does someone survive in this ever-growing economy if they only have cash? If it's easier for the government to print money to pay off debts, does that justify inflating its citizens' currency? Will the widening wealth gap increase social issues within the system? These are all questions you can't overlook. Let us consider the forces and systems that inflation would eliminate. Inflation is a direct effect of printing money. You can't have one without the other. 
If inflation is the solution, governments must be trying to fight against deflation. The entire world is wrapped within an inflationary economy. We are told inflation is a necessary part of that system. Now try to understand what life would be like under a deflationary economy. Think about the past 20 years. In your everyday life, what goods have decreased in price? You could say TVs, solar panels, electric vehicles or computers. If the costs of these items are reducing over time, we can classify them as deflationary. Why are these items decreasing in value over time, even with the government printing tons of money? Shouldn't printing money increase the prices of everything in the system? We can answer this question by understanding what these items all have in common. They are all products of technology. Technology makes products exponentially cheaper over time, even when governments are fighting that trend. If technology constantly drives the price of everything it touches down, this must mean it's deflationary. Let us look at an example you probably haven't even noticed. What's one thing that most people can't live without that wasn't readily available 20 years ago? The internet. You're probably watching this video on a social media platform. Did you pay anything to watch this? No, it's free and always will be. The point is, you have all the information in the Library of Alexandria times 1000. At your fingertips, available in an instant. For free. Say this animation was made 20 years ago, you would need a large production team. Now a few people can write the script, illustrate the script, and make the illustrations move in animation software. The cost of all that is $30, plus the fee paid to the freelance voice artist. Hey. That's me. That exact process 20 years ago would cost around $100,000. Now, all we need is about $300, lots of our time and platforms we can upload to for free. That's a 33,000% decrease in cost over 20 years. Why would governments want to stop deflation from happening? Something seems a bit off, doesn't it? Before we come to answer that, we must understand how technology is deflationary. Here's a drop of water. Say I double the water droplet each day for 50 days. One drop of water on day one, two drops of water on day two, four drops of water on day three, and so on. In other words, each day after the first, there would be double the amount of water than the previous day. How many water droplets would there be on day 50? You would have 615 trillion droplets of water. An Olympic swimming pool has a volume of 48 billion droplets. Imagine being able to fill 12,638 Olympic-sized swimming pools with all of your water. Humans have a hard time understanding exponential growth. We think in linear terms. The same exponential growth can be used to track the development of technology. This is called Moore's Law. Every 18 to 24 months, the number of transistors on microchips double. This has been happening since computers were first being used in the early 1970s. Every 18 to 24 months we experience now, we double the technological advances achieved over the past 51 years. Looking into the future, this exponential growth of technology has no hints of slowing down. If Moore's law continues to be accurate, the price of goods and services will be driven towards zero. People in technology will continue to infiltrate and innovate within every market they can get their hands on people will live with more efficiency and abundance than ever before. Assets would no longer be pushed into oblivion from fake economic growth. The people that hold cash would be rewarded. Their money could buy more and more over time. This also means the exponential growth of technology will overtake a large number of jobs. Unemployment levels would be higher than ever before. You probably think that would be terrible. Why would anyone want the unemployment rate to be high? Well, I agree with you it would be awful, but only in an economy where people have to continually outpace inflation. Think about it in terms of a deflationary economy. People wouldn't need to work as much because their savings would increase in value compared to goods and services. Computers and technology can do the dull day-to-day -day labor while everyone would have more free time to be creative, innovate and share their ideas with the world. Technology doesn't replace people, it frees them. The thing is, this would only happen when governments turn off their printing presses. They won't let that happen. If they did, the current system would collapse. They know that. They know the global debt is $281 trillion. They know the global GDP is only $88 trillion. 
How would people pay off their debt if the GDP dropped drastically? They couldn't. Does this justify maintaining the current system so we don't have to deal with the problem now, but instead let our future generations deal with it as the inflation bubble pops? This you can only answer for yourself. For now, we can leave you with a possible solution to this problem. Bitcoin. Money no one can print more of. Money no government can control. Money nobody can be banned from. Money built by technological innovation. Money that is deflationary. If you would like to learn more about Bitcoin, you can watch our video that will explain it like you're five years old.